Over the last 15 years, Zack Snyder has become one of the most polarizing directors out there. And whether you absolutely love his films or find him to be all style and no substance, everybody has an opinion about Zack Snyder's films and style. So today we're gonna stop and rank all eight Zack Snyder movies from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all eight Zack Snyder films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. With that said, let's get started. Coming in in last place is Sucker Punch, possibly the coolest looking bad movie of all time. The plot is an intentionally bizarre hodgepodge of storylines that exist just to tie together Together, a series of cool looking visuals. The end result is a fascinating experiment that basically functions as a two hour music video. It might be the ultimate example of style over substance. And while I guess it's neat that it exists, I can't say that I enjoyed it all that much. It's just tough to care about what happens in these stunning action sequences when they're essentially a metaphor inside of a fantasy that's a creative visualization of the events that took place over the previous week. Or at least that's my interpretation of what happened. It's all kinds of dreams with inside of dreams going on. And I just couldn't connect with the story because it wasn't real. Coming in at number seven is Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. Who better to adapt a children's book than a director whose three previous movies were, one, a hard R zombie movie about zombies eating people alive, two, a hard R movie about 300 Spartans killing thousands of men and then dying brutal violent deaths, or three, a hard R deconstruction of superhero movies. What could possibly go wrong? No real surprise here, this just might be the most violent PG movie to come out since Gremlins and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom caused the MPAA to invent the PG-13 rating. The graphics may be stunning, some of the owl fights actually are pretty cool. Of course, Zack Snyder knows how to put armor on characters and make them look cool, but the mix of childish elements, an actual Owl City pop song, and visceral Zack Snyder action and violence does not come together to make a family film that makes sense for adults and children to watch. It's a movie that I just don't really know who the target audience was because certain elements were much too kiddy for my taste and it all had a ton of elements much too violent for my children to watch. And so it falls into a real tricky space where I don't know, really know who the audience for it was. Next up is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Ultimate Edition. I haven't watched the theatrical version, I believe since it was in the theater, so I can only evaluate it based off the Ultimate Edition. And for me, this is an ambitious but flawed film. It tries to do so many different things with so many different characters that it ends up weighing itself self down in the process. When it can focus in on specific characters and their interactions, there's some really cool stuff that happens. When it just takes Batman and puts him in a warehouse with a bunch of thugs, it's awesome. But it's trying to tell this story about Superman and how the world would interpret him. It's trying to have all these different villains. It's trying to set up Justice League and this uh, resurrection arc for Superman. And in doing so, it creates this web of plot lines that's so convoluted, so complex, that it gets lost in the weeds more than a few times and can get drag a bit in the middle. This really feels like the WB was putting pressure on Zack Snyder to rush to a Justice League movie. So instead of doing a Batman v Superman movie, it turned into a setup movie and had to put all these extra elements in there that just weighed it down in ways that hurt the overall product. For me, I can enjoy this film. I like a lot of things about it, but every time I watch it, I also just can see a better version of it if it could have been more focused. As a point of reference for me, all the rest of the movies on this list are B pluses or better. In fifth place is Watchmen, the theatrical cut. Here, Zack Snyder attempts to adapt what many had declared as an unadaptable graphic novel. Alan Moore set out to make Watchmen 
distinct to the graphic novel or comic book format, and therefore there's a bunch of elements in the storytelling and the side quest type things that take place that aren't in any way have an equivalent version when it comes to cinema. So many directors had attempted to adapt this over the previous 20 years, and finally Zack Snyder did it, and I think he did about as good of a job as one could. Of course, he has a visual flair for bringing comic books to life in a way that feels dynamic, lively, but also having that comic book vibe to them. The source material, of course, is just so rich in themes, complex characters with good and bad attributes about them, a villain that you understand his motivation, but at the same time, you don't want him to succeed, but you do at the same time for the motivation for why he's doing what he's doing, all of it while taking the superhero genre, turning it on its head, and raising a bunch of great questions. The problem here with the theatrical cut is that it is attempting to adapt this very thick, dense, and long graphic novel into under three hours, and so it feels like you're watching the Cliff Notes version of the story. It's having to go through things very quickly, so some things get dropped, some things aren't elaborated on as much as they should, and so in doing so, some of the story doesn't have some of the punch and oomph that it should. Likewise, there's a few points in time where Zack Snyder himself, I think, gets ahead of the story. In particular, some of the choices if for the soundtrack, it's too upfront and in your face. And a couple other things like that are just a bit too Snydery that I think holds it back just a little bit. As for right now, it's an incredibly ambitious film. He did a very good job with it, but not a perfect job with some of the best comic book source material there is. Then we have Dawn of the Dead, a great remake and just a great zombie movie in general. You have a snappy script from James Gunn and the visuals of a young Zack Snyder put them together and I think it meshes perfectly with this genre. The movie kicks off with a fantastic opening sequence that establishes the chaos of the world, makes you care about our lead character, and just shows you how visceral and exciting that this film is going to be from beginning to end. The film has a diverse set of characters who are different enough to be interesting, but grounded enough to be believable. Everyone is established to be broken in their own ways. Some people fully snap, some people are irrational, some people are just too paralyzed by the chaos to be able to act, but all of them respond to this extreme situation in a different way, and this creates a series of interesting scenarios where you have good people getting bitten, and the team have different ideas as to what they should do about it because there are no good options. Honestly, I wanted to put this one even higher on the list, but there's two things that just left a really bad taste in my mouth. First off, the pregnancy plot line. I just think they went too far, at least for me personally, they crossed the line and went too far with where they went with that. And then the other one is the ending, in particular, all the stuff that happens throughout the credits. I know some people love this kind of ending. For me, it undermines any sense of victory or satisfaction from the character's choices, actions, and sacrifices when you do something like this in the final sequence of a movie. So it left a bad taste in my mouth for a film that I otherwise kind of love. Real quick, before I give you my top three, be sure to share your ranking down below in the comment section. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. Also, I've done a bunch of these director rankings before in the past. Tarantino, M. Night Shyamalan, J.J. Abrams, The Russo Brothers, a bunch of them. You can check them out right up here in this playlist when this video is over. In third place is Man of Steel. This is a movie that took me a little while to warm up to. Whenever I first saw it, I did enjoy it. I liked that it was a different take, but I didn't know what category to put it in because it was so different from what all previous versions of Superman had been. And then every time I rewatched it, I got it just a little bit more and understood more what they were trying to do with this version of the character until the point in time where I got, uh, where I just absolutely love Man of Steel. A big part of that is that it's just like such a thematically rich film from the very beginning, exploring these ideas about societal expectations and making our own choices. 
And you see him explored through these two different father figures, as well as being counterbalanced by the Zod character in his role. And when you combine that with 21st century special effects, a plot line that allows Superman to punch people in the face, and Zack Snyder's a gifting when it comes to action, you get some phenomenal action sequences for Superman to fully use his skill set. Also, Hans Zimmer is one of the greatest composers, film composers of all time, and to me, this is easily his best score that he has ever done. So it's a creative, interesting take on one of my absolute favorite characters with a great new leading man with Superman, a fantastic score. Only thing that kind of holds it back is that I think it's a little bit clunky in the way that it's structured, the way that pieces are put together. I don't think it flows entirely naturally and some of the pacing can be a little bit off. And the tentacle sequence in the finale just feels like a very odd thing that didn't need to be there at all. 300, this is a movie that I think perfectly delivers on what it set out to do. It has a very simple premise and it delivers on it with style and visceral action. It's a movie made for a very specific audience and it's very specific audience loves this film. I am a member of that very specific audience and therefore I love this film and it's very high on this list, but it just manages to perfectly capture this brutal testosterone filled aesthetic while at the same time having being very emotional in its own sort of way by having this band of brothers amongst the smart Spartans where any of them would die for Leonidas and he makes it clear he would die for any one of them. When a man insults his wife, that's what leads to the line, this is Sparta. Like you don't insult my wife and if you do that, we're gonna go to war over it. And there's just something about that old fashioned sense of nobility and brotherhood that makes for characters that you root for, even though they're going on this suicide mission from the very beginning. Of course, the entire thing has such a distinct visual style to it in that it is the comic book images translated to the big screen. It's truly unique and unforgettable. You might not like it, but you can't forget it. So for me, it's a classic tale of heroism, bravery, and masculinity. Might not have the most complex plot, but it executes the story it's trying to tell perfectly. But coming in in first place is Zack Snyder's Justice League, his superhero magnum opus where he was able to complete his vision. After years of the internet pestering people pushing for it, it finally happened. And for me, it absolutely lived up to the hype and delivered. And I was someone that went into it thinking, I was expecting I was gonna give it like a B, like I give Batman v Superman. I thought I was gonna say it was ambitious but flawed. And then I watched it and I just loved it. Perhaps there's a little bit of a holy grail factor when it comes to this one. It's a project that I never saw, thought that we would see this complete of a version. I thought 15 years from now, we would see a version of it, but not with this much budget behind it. So the fact, simple fact that it exists is wow inducing to me. But honestly, I think that it is this sprawling superhero epic where it establishes all these characters and plot points and then slowly develop them, puts, puts the pieces together. So as you move into the second half of the film, there's all of these big gigantic moments that pay off in a big gigantic way. And for me, it was so satisfying. For me, this contains all the best elements of Zack Snyder and shows him growing as a filmmaker. Of course, you have his visual style thrown throughout the entire film, but in a lot of ways, it's his most emotional and character-based film yet. So you see him developing his weaker aspects with this film and has some of his best storytelling as it has complex elements, but they come to have together much more cohesively here than they did in films like Batman v Superman. I've said it many times before, but for me, this version of the film is better in every single way than the theatrical version of the film. It tells a compelling narrative. It really develops the characters and makes you care about them and has a lot of emotional oomph as you move into the second half of the film. So for me, it is the best of Snyder, so it comes in 
at number one. If you enjoyed this ranking and want more director rankings like it, check out that playlist right over there. I've done a whole bunch of other top level directors like Tarantino, David Fincher, M. Night Shyamalan. They're right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.